What's up, my dude? So today, I'm going to be reviewing the motocross game of all time, and I would say I've clocked in about 69 billion hours into this game so far, so <laughs> it's still fun, and this game is so real, it's scary. I tell you, dude, like, it is just... Ugh, it, it's literally real life motocross without broken bones. That's what MX Simulator is. And I think that if you're coming from any other sort of arcade motocross game or, you know, Reflex or whatever, Alive, Supercross, any of those other games, they are just so uncomparable that it, it's like silly to even try to put them both anywhere in the same category. Like, yeah, they both have dirt bikes, but that's about it. <laughs> when you really look at like how much different MX Simulator really is and just a warning, you know, if you're coming from any of those other games, you have to be a little bit tech savvy to figure out uh, just general like files and stuff like that with this game. You know, if you're just a strictly console type player and then you come to MX Simulator, it's going to be a little bit weird and different trying to figure out, you know, how to download the tracks, how to save them in a certain file, how to get the gear to show up and all that different stuff even though it seems easy after you learn how to do it which is how everything is in life um if you don't know how to do it it can seem a little bit like almost like like moddy in a sense where you're kind of it's like oh this is really weird having to do all this but once you get used to it it becomes so much better than the standard console type stuff because you can have any sort of gear you could possibly imagine with anything on it you could have any sort of bike skin with any you know you can put your own logos on everything you can do whatever you want to do and it's it's constantly newer and newer stuff so if some new you know 2017 or 18 gear comes out then you can have that in the game and then if you know five years from now if some newer gear comes out you can have that in the game or if it's like some kind of uh you know different sort of bike uh graphics or something like that you can have anything in the game pretty much whereas like you know your standard console style games out there you just have whatever's in the game and if they add a little bit of dlc and that's pretty much it so that's how those games are. That's what differs MX Simulator so much. And if you don't really get deep enough into MX Simulator, you might not ever realize that in a sense of like, you truthfully can put whatever you want in, into this game. That's how it is. And, and people might think of that like in a mod type sense, like it never was meant to be in there, but that's not the case with MX Simulator. That's actually how the game is meant to be it's meant to be where you can make anything you want to do and not only that but the custom tracks that's what takes it to just a a skyrocket level and i think what separates mx simulator custom track wise from some of these other games is the fact that it's so much easier to make custom tracks in this game it, it's just it really is a simplistic in-game builder type system and once you learn it it's not that difficult at all it's not like this sketchy you know different kind of program over here that you're working in and you don't really know what's going on like it's all built in there pretty well in this game so it, i feel like you get a lot more custom tracks um in that sense you know and if you're trying to become a track builder which i think is a a very big part to it and i think we all every motocrosser out there i think has a little bit of something in them that wants to build a custom track i, I just think that's a a cool thing for any motocross dude out there even if you're not like wanting to be this super you know custom track builder for video games or whatever you may still just want to go in there and mess around and make some custom tracks and it's it's a lot more simplistic in this game but uh you know if you're coming from any other game and you just you look at the mx simulator demo which is what fucking 90 percent of people see for some reason uh, it's like you know people say oh those graphics suck i mean i've heard it 10 million times but it's when you actually get into the game and you realize how 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 it can be pretty much anything for instance here is a mars super cross track and then we were just on a super tropical you know just out of this world looking track and you can have that 
at any point in time. You can have anything your mind can imagine in this game because it's all user created. Everything in this game is that way. So if you just go and look at the demo, do not judge this book by its cover. Let me tell you, dude. <laughs> it's just, this is not the kind of game to do that with. Um, and it, it is so different because that's how, that's how a lot of people base... You know, everything, when they look at a new motocross game, it's how good is the graphics? How good is this? How good is that? But with MX Simulator, the graphics portion of it is like the not even what the game is all about. Even though I think it looks just fine. If you have your graphics maxed out and you have everything on your computer maxed out and you have, you know, a certain particular track with good enough ground decals and good enough um, different kind of lighting effects and things like that i would say it looks just about as good as any other um maybe not quite as as um pristine and in certain areas just because the game is so old you know it's gonna look a little bit more like sharp edges on stuff but it, you know it's not gonna be quite as smoothed out and look like a brand new you know playstation 4 game obviously but it's still gonna look pretty damn good dude and and i think a lot of people may not realize that if they all they've ever seen is the demo of the game and i think most people just don't understand what's really going on with this game they just think what is this mx simulator i've never really seen this before what's going on so then they may just get the demo and i think a lot of people may not even really be pc motocross gamers at least i wasn't when i first got into this game so i was like uh i guess it's okay you know played the demo for a couple days but once i I turned the arcade mode off. That's what changed everything for me. Um, and that's what I recommend doing. Even if you only have the demo or whatever it is, turn that fucking arcade mode off right away, dude. And you'll realize the magic to MX Simulator. The whole reason everybody raves about this game and, and everybody just cannot stop playing it for, you know, decades is because it feels like a real dirt bike. I mean, it's, and and if you've never had that experience in a video game, you couldn't even understand my words right now. <laughs> it, it's, uh, you know how like a real dirt bike, you still ride it even to this day, it, you know, for years and years and years, it's fun, the competitive aspect of it, even if you're not the best ever, you still ride dirt bikes because you love dirt bikes. Well, MX Simulator is the same way, but it's in, just in virtual form, so you know, you feel like you still want to play MX Simulator forever because you're constantly building up your skill on the game and the skill gap is just, oh my god, dude, <laughs> it's crazy. So you're always, you always have this sense of progression with MX Simulator and I think that's what makes it so much more rewarding than these other motocross games. It's just so different in that sense where it's like, the competitive aspect of it, when you start getting into that with MX Simulator, that's what makes you never want to put the controller down because you get a very similar sense of reward with this game that you do in real life motocross because that's how hard the game is. So whenever you get to a pro level in this game and you start doing really well, I mean, you get the same nerves you would in real life racing. You get the same... You know, like, if you get a good finish, it's like, oh my god, dude, you're on some kind of, you know, high. <laughs> like, winning high. Uh, and, and you guys that have done that in real life would know what I'm talking about. Like, if you if you win a race in real life, especially like a, a big uh, sort of amateur race or something like that, you know, if you won that, you'd be on a high for like a week for doing that. And it's very similar with MX Simulator. It's obviously not the exact same, but it is... It's unreal similar when you when you get in there and and realize just how how much fun the game can be when you get deep enough in it. And I think that's where it gets important to play the game enough before you give up on it because at the beginning it's going to be like a real life dirt bike. It's you know, you can't hop on here and expect to be whipping it backwards on day 1 and and riding like you're playing MX versus ATV or something. That's just not going to happen. It it takes a long time to ever get to that point. Um you know, and that's how that progression works up. It's just there's so many different bike setup things you can do in this game. There's all different kinds of bikes. You got 125s, you got 254 strokes, 252 strokes, 454 strokes, you got 50s, you got all that different stuff. And 
It's just an amazing game, dude. I would give it a 10 overall. I think that if, if it had a couple more little things like a, a really good terrain deformation and just a couple of other smaller things out there, it has the potential to be an 11 out of 10 to me. Um, but that's MX Simulator, dude. This is, I'm telling you, the motocross game of all time. If you, ha if you don't believe the hype, dude, just get into it. Like, get you a controller turn the arcade mode off, get on some cool tracks, go download some decently looking tracks, and you will realize what everybody is talking about. And I just, I can't for the life of me understand why this game is not bigger than it is. I, I don't get it, because a, a lot of people, that's really all they're looking for in a motocross game. It's something that is like real life, but it's in a virtual world. But but some people aren't, and I understand that side of it too, but it's like, man, people that, you know, try to get really good at an arcade motocross game, like, this is what you should be trying to get good at, because this is what actually matters in a sense, and what's kind of cool about it too is, like, I feel like motocross eventually is going to be a lot bigger in the virtual world um, when technology gets better, and there's just no telling, but this is like the first step in that evolution, in my opinion, you know, you got to have the simulator aspect of it before you can start getting handlebars and like a full face mask where you, you don't see the outside world at all. You know, it's it's virtual. Everything's virtual on the dirt bike. Well, this is the first stage to that. If you were wondering, <laughs> it makes simulator is that. And I just I can't believe this game isn't like 10 times as big as it already is. I guess it's because some people like I'm saying, they only see the demo they only they think oh this game came out in 07 or whatever it's it's way old dude but th this game it's timeless dude it's timeless i just I, there has never been a game like this in my entire life it has just been the coolest thing i've ever played before um and i've spent way more time into this game than any of those other games and this game is not even $60 it's worth 20 times the price of this game in my opinion because of all the custom tracks and the it's basically like you have 10,000 DLC packs for a you know a MX versus ATV game right out of the gate and you can make your own tracks make whatever you want to make you know <laughs> it's it's crazy when it, when you really think of it like that it's just it's unreal so i wanted to thank a donator here real quick a dude named Wyatt Brown he sent me $4.20 blaze it dog <laughs> Hey dudes, I just wanted to let you know that there is a link in the description to donate to me if you want to support me. And if you can't or you just don't want to, I totally understand. That's why it's completely optional. But I will be listing my top 10 donators at the end of every single future video. And I will shout out every new donator at the end of a video, even if they're not top 10. So I want to let you guys know that I have all of my different playlists on my front page, whether it be game-specific playlist or series-specific playlists. So if you're looking for any particular game or particular series that you want to watch, I have it all laid out there in a pretty organized manner on my front page. And my email address is spencerturley at live.com, no space, no capital. And I do accept sponsorship offers. And you guys should also follow me on Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, PlayStation Network, Xbox Live, Steam, all that different stuff at Spencer Turley, no space, no capital. So anyways, I appreciate you guys watching the videos. Later, dudes.